with the very same tools that we use to build the game. It, it blows my mind to see people get hands-on with these tools. So one of the uh, kind of hallmarks that we have with the franchise is that the idea of the trap room. In, in the, the first Unreal Tournament, we had this great map that was an industrial level that had a pressure chamber in it. And we had, we had this technology where we could actually take the characters and make them like bow outward like they were being inflated with something. And, and kind of like if a character was released into deep space, you know, as far as they just get ready to pop, right? And they explode into, you know, a bunch of just giant pieces of flesh. And you could, people would go into that chamber looking for power-ups and you could hit a button and just watch them inflate and they'd be running around like cursing you and, you know, doing taunts and things like that. And uh, they'd pop and you'd get a frag and, yeah, you know what, you could shoot them, but making them explode like that was always a thousand times more satisfying. Headshot. I think the whole clan scene is a really fascinating kind of evolution of where the shooter market has gone. I mean, if you take gamers, they, they want to play together. They want to feel like they're a bigger part of something. And the clan matches, the, the, the clan scene is kind of representative of that. And what you actually have now is the idea of professional gamers that have kind of come out of the clan scene, whereas the, these gamers get together, they become extraordinary at these uh, titles, and then they actually move on to making a great living playing a video game all day long, which, if you ask me, is just absolutely unbelievable, and we encourage it and support it in every way possible. Um, Altfire, I think, yeah, definitely changed the, the genre, you know, a little bit of first-person shooters. It just added a whole other layer, you know, gameplay to the whole gameplay mechanic. Uh, you know, you could basically throw in those, like two weapons for the price of one, and in some cases even threes. I think a lot of games have kind of, you know, took that and ran with it as well after we did it. So back in the day, uh, during the development of Unreal Tournament, we had a designer named Cedric. Uh, he was this uh, crazy Frenchman who one day just made a map that was uh, essentially an asteroid in the middle of space that was rotating. And the first version of Facing Worlds, which is what the map became known as, uh, it's basically two towers on an asteroid with Earth in the background. Ultimately, this wound up being the most played CTF map of the, or the original Unreal Tournament. Uh, I just think it's because gamers loved popping each other's heads with the sniper rifle. That was like the gold standard, kind of like, you know, default map for Unreal Tournament CTF, which is just to this day, classic top three maps of all time. You like that? So in the first Unreal Tournament, we had these like taunts that were like a pelvic thrust. And so players could hit a button and they could just kind of like do this kind of thing. And like, it was essentially the original humiliation of its day because players would knock another player out and the player would be in spectator mode for a second. A player would go over him and just kind of do the thrust and just taunt him and just further enrage him and just undermine their ability to play the game and just be a bastard on the internet. With Unreal Tournament 2004, we were looking for, for one major new feature that we could add to Unreal Tournament that would fit well into Unreal Tournament, but still you know, really extend the, the gameplay. And we, we had thought about vehicles, but we were concerned that vehicles wouldn't fit with the really fast-paced, on-foot, um, deathmatch style that Unreal Tournament had. Vehicles were kind of a natural extension of uh, where the market was going, and we knew that, yeah, we would have something that was kind of like a buggy, but we'd do the Unreal twist on it where we'd put giant blades in the front of it. And, the impact that that had on uh, map design was actually pretty tremendous because no longer could you make a traditional corridor shooter type of environment. You had to make very large scale uh, terrain filled environments that could handle flying vehicles and driving vehicles and hover vehicles in a large a node based uh, system such as what Onslaught introduced in 2004. Short time to spectacle and carnage, carnage, carnage. Epic is a company that has a reputation for making stellar product that does not ship before its time. We also have a reputation for making a beautiful product that plays extraordinarily well. And Unreal Tournament has always been the crown jewel in what we do as developers. At Epic, we have a real passion for this kind of game. I mean, it's, it's our heritage, it's in our DNA, it's what we do. Unreal Tournament, it's in our blood. I can't, I can't see us not making Unreal Tournament games. This is the trophy that we put on the box cover, and uh, we got a bunch of these made um, for all the developers on the original Unreal Tournament. So uh, this is my uh, trophy for finishing Unreal Tournament. <laughs>
I can't believe you found one that's actually still intact. Like this breaks off and this breaks off. <laughs> Everyone I've seen is in pieces. <laughs> wow, this is a trophy from uh, the original Unreal Tournament game we shipped. Is it? <laughs> I don't remember the year. <laughs> to me, this is kind of uh, one of the defining symbols of, of the franchise, and just holding it now actually kind of makes me a little weak. You have a tissue. For those willing to build a mountain of bones and climb to the top, in environments that stun against AI that kills, for those willing to stake their lives in the pursuit of victory, we salute you.